trying to generate images with text in them using stable diffusion typically produces garbled words. Um, if indeed you do get any text at all, I mean I really want these cats to smell of milk written on the cake, but all I'm getting is cake. However, with the release of any text, we can now not only make sure the text actually appears, but also reduce how garbled it is. Here I've got a prompt of a delicate square cake mixed berries and cats smell of milk. Down here I've been able to position where the text goes, so I've got the first word, the second and the third there, and as you can see from the generations we now have some lovely cakes telling us that cats do indeed smell, which they do, of milk. Because I've asked for a cake, the other thing you can see it's done there is do sort of cake style lettering, which is very nice. But generating text in images isn't the only thing you can do because you can also edit the text. Here, the original image has I heart my mommy. Obviously, mommy isn't a word in British English, so you'd want to replace it with something that makes a lot more sense, just like I have done here. Characters written in chalk on the blackboard that say rodent, and now you've got the result, I heart my rodent. I particularly like the last one there, that seems to have kept the style pretty well, and of course you can do that up in the prompt there, I've got it chalk on blackboard. However, it doesn't actually need to be specified in the prompt because it will still keep the style pretty well. For example, here the original image says love you more on a sort of cake topper. Once again, I've improved on the original text here, but this time I'm just using a single word as my prompt, rodents. And like you can see in the four examples, even though I've not specified that it should be a sort of red plastic cake topper, it's gone ahead and done that anyway. Pretty cool. Their GitHub page has loads of other examples in the gallery, things you can see here, coffee art, coins, graffiti, childlike drawings, got handbags and all sorts of other things there. Hopefully that should give you some inspiration and a bit of an idea about what this can do, but I will generate some more images in just a moment. Like they show there, it handles both Chinese and English characters, plus if we scroll down a little bit there, we've got an evaluation showing the things they tested it against, and of course this beats them all. Installation is just a case of running the installer from my Patreon or by following the instructions they provide. And even better still, if we scroll up here, we can see they've released it under an Apache 2.0 license, meaning you get all that lovely open source freedom. The model itself is based off Stable Diffusion 1.5, which opens up the possibility of this being something we could use in both Automatic 11.11 or Comfy UI. Now, originally this did use 20 gig of VRAM, but as of a few moments ago, the default is now to use FP16, which cuts that in half down to just 10 gig. Additionally, if you're not using Chinese characters, then you won't need to load the translator either further dropping those VRAM requirements down to a mere 8 gig for generation of a 512 by 512 image. Through my extremely thorough and extensive testing, I have discovered that it's not all sunshine and roses, because some words just don't work or look quite right all the time, but it's certainly better than a plain stable diffusion model. Of course, you could use control nets and things to help out with that, but they can be pretty rigid. All right, let's dive into this interface and see what they provide. Up the top here, we've got an instructions panel, which is particularly useful if you've not used this sort of thing before. However, if you are used to Gradio interfaces and stable diffusion, it will be pretty intuitive. If we close that down, of course, we've got another panel here with parameters. This one gives you all the usual goodies, image count, number of steps, resolution, seed, and all that sort of stuff. For me, I found the defaults to be fine, but if you're the sort of person that likes to get into those finer controls, then at least you get the option to do so. You get two tabs, one for text generation and another one for editing. I'm going to start out with the text generation, and this is where the whole image is generated by Stable Diffusion, so your prompts are really essential here. 
the text parts you want should be quoted and you can pick where they go and in what order. So there you've got manual draw, manual rectangle or an automatic option as well. And there's the positioning, either horizontal or vertical. If we pick one of their examples here, we've got a photo of a caramel macchiato coffee on the table, top down perspective with the text any and text. So you see that's the first word in the first quote and text is the second word. That means you've got the two boxes there. If I click run using their default example parameters, we should in just a couple of seconds get four images out. There we go. Let's close that one down so we can see all four at once. And there we have any text in a caramel macchiato style. I particularly like the last one there, which looks delicious. OK, you can, of course, edit this any way you like. Now, this text doesn't include rodents, so we need to resolve that. And we've also got three words there as well. So if I try and run that, oh, what's gone wrong? Error. Found two positions and I need three from the prompts. So make sure you use the correct number of masks and a reasonable size for each word as well. OK, so now I've selected three areas. That error should no longer appear. And just for giggles, let's also go into these parameters and pick a random seed, change some other stuff, make sure we're not getting cherry picked results. You can drag that slider all the way down to minus one there to get some randomization. OK, now if I run this through, here you can see that it definitely isn't perfect every time. The first one and the last one are OK, but let's do another generation. See what happens here. Will the letters still be a little bit squiffy? Yes, they will. But often it is very good. There we've got one rodents are cool. That's quite nice. But yes, those other ones, little bit random. Just to really emphasize that letter placement is quite important and will uh, obviously change that image quite a lot. I'll, uh, I'll switch it to manual rectangles this time and uh, we'll rerun that. Now, this is quite blocky, obviously. So what is the result going to be? I'll give you a clue. It's going to be fairly blocky. So as these are squares, we've now got this very lined up text, which is nice because that may be what you want. Perhaps you're doing something like a sign or some other image that would benefit from quite straight writing like that. Also, in this case, you can see the text is a lot more clear. So it really does depend quite a lot both on your prompt and the masking you do as to the quality of the output which you're going to get. The other option you can use is auto randomized. And as you can see in this case, once again, it's done the text very well, but it hasn't positioned it exactly where I want. And also in this attempt, it's like, no, I can't actually auto position it. So sometimes it really will just fail. Overall, I'd really suggest doing the manual drawing as that gives you the best control over things like latte writing, unless you want that square sign and you'd use the manual rectangle. As mentioned, that isn't the only thing it can do because there is also text editing. Over in this tab, they give us a selection of results as well. So there you can see where I changed it from daddy to rodents. And we'll generate another four images there just to show you this result. And as we saw earlier, that is pretty cool. Now, one thing with their examples is you can't actually edit the mask. They've, they've sort of baked it in there, but that doesn't really matter because if you pick your own image, then you can. This time I've gone with a welcome sign and obviously welcome isn't a word we want. We want that to say rodents instead. So let's generate another few of those, see what happens. And there we've now got our rodent signs. Once again, we've got a one there at the bottom, which doesn't quite say rodents, but these are quite good. That is wobbly. That's what I asked for. It's kind of metal. And of course, you can keep generating to your heart's content until you get something that works for you. One thing I do like is how it's kept the shadow in there, which goes across one of the letters like in the original. So that's pretty nice. I was kind of expecting it to cut that out, but it's melded it in nicely. As is the way, just as I'd finished my first take on this video, I discovered a work in progress version of any text for Comfy UI, though I've not found one as yet for Automatic 1111. It really is a work in progress right at the moment, though, and as such, I've not actually been able to generate anything using it. So perhaps while you're waiting, you could watch another Nerdy Rodent video.